Hello. I don't think anyone could deny that these are strange and challenging times indeed. So much so that I can't work from my normal studio. So, for the next few videos, I hope you'll forgive me not appearing all the way through. That may be a bonus, as much as a drawback, but you'll get my audio and you'll get my normal slides, plus a contact point where you can raise any questions. I hope you still enjoy the videos, and once we're through this crisis, I look forward to rejoining you from the usual spot. Welcome to this Killick Explains video. This week, I want to take on a topic that's been all over the headlines, and that is negative interest rates in the UK. When may they arrive here? That I don't know. What would be the ramifications, and why are people talking about it now? So the background is what? Well, essentially, the recent coronavirus crisis has seen interest rates plunge to historic low levels from already very low levels. And people are saying, well, the logical extension of that policy is interest rates going below zero at some point. So let's take a look at why this could happen and what the implications might be, both positive and negative. Now, it all began with gilts. So we need to look at the gilts market to see why people are suddenly thinking, crikey, could this happen in the UK, just as it's already happened in places like the Eurozone and Japan? Now, the UK government is seen as a very safe place to lend money because basically it's unlikely to go bust. So people are prepared to do deals with the UK government on terms that might seem crazily unattractive to the average person. And the normal borrowing mechanism is called a gilt. It's an IOU issued by the government. So investors buy these things, they expect some sort of return in a normal market, and then the government buys them back at a fixed maturity or redemption date. And typically these carry a, a positive coupon interest rate, but also an overall yield. And that sets the benchmark for other types of borrowing. So people look at a typical, say, 10-year government IOU gilt and say, well, there is the risk-free rate. And what do they mean by that? Well, the government's unlikely to go bust. So the rate at which we're prepared to lend money to UK government is likely to be one of the lowest, if not the lowest, across the market, given the risk we're taking on. Now, as I mentioned, gilts typically carry a positive coupon. So how can you have an instrument with a positive coupon but a negative overall yield? And the answer is that its overall yield to maturity is a function of the coupon and any gain or loss to maturity. Loss being a key word here. And if a bond is sold above its par value, even with a positive coupon, a negative yield becomes possible. Now, a very simplified example will illustrate why, and then we'll talk about the central bank rate going negative if that should happen. So, if you take a three-year gilt, I've made up the, the life of the gilt, so it's issued now, the government will buy it back in three years. The coupon is 2%, so that's positive. And that, remember, is fixed in relation to £100 nominal value. But at auction, the price paid is £109 per 100. So people have competed to buy this thing. They've piled in, driven the price up to £109 per £100 nominal value. And remember, the £100 nominal value is like a quantity. It's like fixing a price for a kilo of carrots, if you want to see it that way. So the price is above nominal value. But this thing will be bought back or redeemed at nominal value. And that's important. So the overall yield to maturity on an incredibly simplified basis is a function of the £2 annual coupon, that's positive, and the £3 per year, crudely speaking, the holder will lose between now and maturity, the difference between 109 and 100. Mash those together very simply, and you get a yield to maturity of negative around 1%, 0.91%, if we ignore discounting, which I will for this example. So that's how it happens. You get gilts, IOUs, that may carry a positive coupon, but issued at a price that creates a negative yield. Now, why do investors buy them? Because you might think, well, this is sure it's crazy. Why is someone essentially paying the government to borrow money from them? Well, the answer is government IOUs are seen as a very safe haven. The government is a safe place to lend money, as I mentioned before. You can make a profit on the trade. Don't forget that although some people will basically buy these things, these IOUs, and then hold them through to redemption, Others won't. They'll try and trade them in the meantime for a profit. And some institutions have very little choice in terms of their asset allocation and their need to hedge out other exposures. So that's got the Bank of England, amongst others, thinking, well, the natural extension would be a central bank rate of interest that's negative. Now, why is that causing so much debate? Given that they've cut rates when they've been positive, what's the stigma, if you want to see it that way, with negative rates? Well, first of all, um, 
fans of negative rates. Well, it's just an extension of the policy of cutting the central bank rate in order to stimulate demand, make life easier for borrowers and so on. Um, and it would push other related rates negative. So if you drag the central bank rate down, you drag down rates that are linked or connected to it, variable rates elsewhere. And as I say, fans would say, this is just a logical extension of a policy that seeks to uh, create a bit more inflation because inflation is below target at the moment and also stimulate demand, move people out of savings. So what's the big but that comes with this argument? Well, there are several. One, critics say it will weaken sterling and sterling is already on the floor. It can't take much more of a pummeling. The signal that will send out internationally about the state of the UK economy isn't worth the risk. Secondly, it could stifle business investment. So it might not stimulate anything because businesses might retrench and say, well, how are we ever going to make a positive rate of return, internal rate of return on our investments? And of course, quite a few people in one shape, way, shape or form have wages linked to the wider rate of inflation, interest rates and so on. So it could actually stifle wages growth. And those two things could create both um, a crisis of confidence and what's more, moral hazard. Now, what I mean by moral hazard is that savers in a bid to find somewhere to put their money might, rather than spending it, as perhaps the government would hope, rather than you know, creating demand again, if you like, people might simply seek out high yield but high risk investments instead. So it could backfire in that sense. It's going to make life difficult for people who actually do need to earn a return on their invested capital. And that's the dilemma faced by the bank right now. Do we go as far as a negative central bank rate, take the risks I've mentioned on the chin and hope they don't all materialise? Or do we stop short of that because of the psychological and actual damage it could do? Questions on what's a big topic? To editor at killick.com, please. And to watch related videos, it's killick.com forward slash learn.